Welcome back to GatehouseSupplies.com. In this video, we will show you how to change the gears in your LiftMaster, Chamberlain, or Sears garage door opener. We offer two gear kits. The first gear kit is part number 41C4220. It's the complete kit with gears, shaft, and output sprocket. Or the 41A2817 gear kit, which are the gears only with no shaft and sprocket. We suggest removing the unit from the ceiling and working on it on a workbench or even on the floor. It'll make things a lot easier for you. First thing you need to do is loosen the chain bolt to put some slack on the chain. Loosen the bolt up the whole way. And then go ahead and remove the chain from the sprocket, being careful not to catch your fingers in the gears. And then lay the chain on the end of the rail. Next thing we're going to do is remove all the screws from the outside cover. If you use a screw gun, it'll make things go a little quicker. There's four screws on the outer cover, two on each side, four screws on the back panel, which we'll take off next. And then we have four screws on the front panel, which we will take out. Once you do that, simply unplug the light socket and remove the cover. Go ahead and unplug the circuit board from the back panel and remove that and set it aside. Next thing you want to do is loosen the wire ties that hold the wiring harnesses into place so we have some flexibility to move those around. Then go ahead and unplug the wiring harness from the sensor on the back. Then we want to remove the W clip from the top of the uh, limit gear on the main shaft. And go ahead and remove the three bolts that hold the main shaft assembly in. Then remove the limit assembly by popping the tabs in the front and rotating out of the hook in the back. Then go ahead and remove the limit gear from the top of the shaft and pop the shaft out through the top of the machine. Then remove the interrupter cup from the back of the motor shaft. And at this point it's a good idea to probably remove the RPM sensor board to avoid damage. Go ahead and loosen the set screws and remove them from the set collar. There are two of them. And then uh, remove the set collar itself from the motor shaft as well as the washer cap, the spring washer, and the flat washer from the motor shaft. Go ahead and remove the main bearing from the motor plate and remove the bushing from the end of the motor shaft also. At this point we can go ahead and take out the three screws that hold the motor onto the motor plate. And I realize we're going a little fast here but you can always go back and watch the parts as you need to uh, to catch up or to refresh. Once we have those off, we can go ahead and remove the motor from the assembly by sliding it back. And the motor is free. The next thing we'll do is we'll remove the worm gear from the motor shaft. And once we get that out, then we're ready to start putting everything back together. I do recommend that you clean the shafts up a little bit with some emery paper to make things go together better. Go ahead and lube the new worm gear, slide it onto the motor shaft and make sure that it seats on the roll pin on the bottom of the motor shaft. And then we can go ahead and reinstall the motor into the motor plate. And go ahead and put the screws back on, the three screws that hold it on. And then we will, at this point, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, bushing back on the motor shaft. Be careful, there is a notch in the motor plate and a notch on the bushing that have to match up. If you clamp it with some vice grips and you tap the back of the motor shaft, it pushes it through, it makes it a little easier to go together. Now you're going to go ahead and install your flat washer, followed by the spring washer, and then the washer cap that holds it all together. And then at that point we're going to go ahead and put the set screws into the set collar and reinstall the set collar. You're going to want to make sure you, you put the, the set screws in, snug them up a little bit, and then what we're going to want to do is, is push on the back of the motor shaft so that it, it pushes it the whole way out to this side, like so. Push that back, get that nice and snug, and then at that point go ahead and, and tighten up your set screws. We don't want to have any play in this when we're done. Then go ahead and lube up the, the main shaft, main bearing shaft and insert that into the main bearing plate. 
tapping it into place. And then we're going to go ahead and get the main shaft ready to go. We want to take the grease, the grease and put a liberal amount on the main gear. And we also want to lube up the, the motor gear that we just installed, the worm gear on the motor shaft. Go ahead and remove the clip from the limit gear on the top of the new shaft. Take off the limit gear. And go ahead and slide the new shaft into place. Once reinstalled, we can go ahead and put the three screws back into the main plate to hold the shaft on, reinstall the inner rudder, rupture cup on the motor, and plug the RPM sensor board back in. Go ahead and clip the limit assembly back into place, hooking in the back first, pressing the tabs into the front, seating it fully, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put the limit gear back on the main shaft along with the W clip, making sure the two gears engage properly. Go ahead and plug the main circuit board back in. And then we'll reinstall the back panel. We'll get a couple of screws set in the bottom there to hold it in place. And then we'll go ahead and reinstall the front panel, put the light socket through the hole. Put the two screws into the bottom to secure it into place. Reinstall your light socket. Go ahead and put your chain back on your gears, again being careful not to pinch your fingers. And go ahead and put the cover back on the machine. And reinstall the remaining screws. In the front panel. and on the side cover. Go ahead and reinstall the extra screws in the back panel for the circuit board. And that's it, you're all set. Go ahead and put the tension back on your chain and tighten it back up to the proper tension per your manual. Reinstall your light and your light socket and your light cover and you're ready to go. Now I understand we went through that pretty fast, but you can go back and watch any part of it you need to. Uh, don't forget to follow your manual. You're going to have to maybe readjust your limit sensors a little bit. It's a good idea to run the door without the arm connected for the first time to make sure you know where it's stopping. Thanks for tuning in to GatehouseSupplies.com. You can go online and order those gear kits at any time. Thank you.